Throughout millennia, various states boasted illustrious dynasties, celebrated for their greatness. Examples include Egypt's 4th dynasty and Rome's Nerva Antonine dynasty. In Europe, post-Roman Empire, dynasties like Merovingian, Carolingian and Ottonian flourished. Sometimes cadet branches would emerge when a dynasty was created from a king's younger descendant. Such would be the case in Portugal. The House of Capet, reigning over France from 987 to 1328, created by Hugh of Capet, consolidated royal power and expanded territories, laying the French monarchy's groundwork. From it arose branches like the Valois. In Portugal, Henry of Burgundy, a descendant of the Duke of Burgundy, became Count of Portugal in the late 11th century. The House of Burgundy, a cadet branch of the Capetian dynasty, was initiated by Robert I, Duke of Burgundy, son of King Robert II of France. Thus, Henry brought a new governance dynasty to Portugal. He would die in 1112, being succeeded by his wife, Teresa, who ruled briefly until her son, Afonso, rebelled in 1128. Afonso, victorious at the Battle of São Mamed against his mother, ascended as Count of Portugal. After conflicts with Leon and Castile, and campaigns against the Almoravid Empire, Afonso's pivotal moment came in 1139, at Orique where his men proclaimed him king before a decisive victory against the Almoravid Caliphate. This affirmed Portugal's military prowess and capacity of defending itself. Subsequent years witnessed struggles with Galicia and continued Almoravid engagements. Finally, on October 5th, 1143, Afonso VII of Leon and Castile recognized Afonso as Portugal's king marking the kingdom's birth. The Burgundian dynasty thus became the first in the history of the Kingdom of Portugal. This house would produce notable monarchs, shaping Portugal's rich history. As the Burgundian dynasty commenced, so did a flurry of conquests under its first five kings, driven by various factors, such as the Crusades, the Reconquista, a monarch's will to show military prowess, medieval expectations of kingship, and the strength of adversaries. Foremost amongst Portugal's foes were the Almoravid and Almohad Caliphates, while Leon opposed Portuguese expansion on claims of conquest rights. Additionally, typhus like Badajoz and Niebla both significant challenges. Key conquests within the first two centuries included the sieges of Santarém and Lisbon in 1147, the capture of Alcácer do Sal in 1217, and the gradual annexation of the Algarve from the 1230s to 1250. Notable military monarchs such as Afonso I, Sancho II and Afonso III spearheaded these endeavors, with Afonso I earning renown as one of the most formidable warrior kings of the High Middle Ages. Lisbon's siege was part of the Second Crusade, while Alcácer do Sal's conquest occurred during the Fifth Crusade. Portugal's involvement in the wider Crusades movement also saw participation in the Third Crusade, with the conquest of Silge in 1189. Unfortunately, the city would be lost to the Almohads in 1191, until it was finally reconquered again in the early 13th century. As part of the wider Hispanic Reconquista movement, Portuguese volunteers, including Templars, fought alongside other Iberian kingdoms in significant engagements like the Battle of Las Naves de Tolosa, where a Portuguese provincial master of the Templars in Portugal, Leon and Castile, 
sacrificed his life for victory. As for the other two kings, Sancho I and Afonso II, father and son respectfully, their legacies in Portuguese history are more tied to contributions beyond military conquest. Sancho I, although skilled in military leadership, particularly demonstrated during his princehood and early reign, such as his successful defense of Santarém against the Almohads in 1184 and the conquest of Silves in 1189, focused primarily on building infrastructure on the Young Kingdom. Consequently, his reign witnessed the proliferation of forals or royal charters, surpassing those of any other ruler in the First Dynasty, issuing over 30. While not all were personally issued by him, he laid the groundwork for their insurance. Additionally, he founded the city of Guarda, Portugal's highest city, located at an altitude of 1 km. Afonso II diverged from the militaristic norms of his era due to his affliction with leprosy, rendering him unable to lead troops into battle. Despite this, he once commanded troops in a siege against one of his sisters, due to conflicts arising from his father's testament. Afonso II is renowned as the first Portuguese monarch to prioritize legal matters, commissioning the writing of the kingdom's inaugural set of laws. He is also credited with being the first to call for the court, a medieval parliament, marking a significant institutional development. In 1220, he established the royal commissions, tasked with verifying the nature and legitimacy of land grants to nobles, furthering administrative and legal frameworks in Portugal. Internal conflicts within the Portuguese kingdom surfaced firstly during Afonso II's reign, as he waged war against his sisters to reclaim lands granted to them by their father, alarmed by their marriages to Castilians and potential foreign influence on Portuguese affairs. However, the most intense civil strife erupted during the reign of King Sancho II, having fought his brother Afonso, then Count of Boulogne sur Mer. Sancho II had been declared Rex Inutilis by the Pope, and Afonso, the kingdom's curator. This sparked a two-year civil war from 1246 to 1248, culminating in Afonso's victory and his ascension to the throne as Afonso III. Following his ascension, Afonso III swiftly conquered Faro in 1249, with the remaining territories in Algarve falling a year later, marking the completion of the Reconquista in Portugal. Moreover, in 1255, he designated Lisbon as the new capital of the kingdom. Additionally, from the period of the first five kings, it's crucial to note the growing emphasis on centralizing power, which began during King Sancho I's reign, but reached its zenith already after the conclusion of the Reconquista in Portugal. With the Reconquista over, Portugal ceased facing Muslim invaders on its soil, except for pirate and cursoire raids that persisted until the 19th century. The kingdom's focus shifted to securing its eastern borders with Castile, resulting in conflicts throughout the 14th century, except during King Pedro I's reign. King Dinish, for instance, launched an incursion into Castile from 1296 to 1297, in alliance with Aragon and the Taif of Granada, leading the army as the most powerful Iberian monarch of his time. Portuguese forces not accompanying the king engaged in battles along the southern borders, capturing territories from Castile. His successor, Afonso IV, engaged in conflict with Castile from 1336 to 1338, marked by reciprocal invasions. Despite this, the ownership of border territories had mostly been settled through treaties between Afonso III, Dinish, and the Castilian crown. Still, while Portugal had concluded its Reconquista, Islamic empires continued to pose a threat to the Iberian Peninsula. In 1340, the Moroccan Marinid Sultanate 
invaded Castile, prompting King Alfonso XI to seek aid from Afonso IV of Portugal. Afonso IV personally led his army to battle near the River Salado, where the Portuguese and Castilians, despite being heavily outnumbered, achieved a decisive victory against the Marinids. This triumph marked the definitive end of the Muslim invasions of Hispania. From the reign of Dinij onwards, Portugal witnessed significant advancements across various spheres of administration, with King Dinij playing a pivotal role due to his multifaceted proficiency. His reign was marked by the issuance of numerous royal charters, the establishment of Portuguese as the official language, and the modernization of castles. Dinij's most notable contributions include the creation of the University of Coimbra, the nationalization of military orders, and two particularly impactful actions, the establishment of the Order of Christ and the foundation of the Portuguese Navy. The Order of Christ, Dinij's successor to the Templars, was founded after the dissolution of the Templar Order by the Pope. Instead of persecuting the Templars, Dinij transformed them into the Order of Christ, integrating all former Templars from Portugal. This military order played a crucial role during the Age of Discoveries, with its emblem adorning the sails of Portuguese caravels, nauch and galleons, embarking on voyages worldwide from the 15th century onwards. Dinij also created the Portuguese Navy in 1317, appointing Manuel de Pesanha, a Genoese, as the Royal Admiral. Initially focused on combating Muslim raids along the Portuguese coast, the Navy soon expanded its scope to trade, enhancing commerce in the English Channel, France and the North Sea. Dinij's legacy extended beyond administration and military affairs, he was celebrated as one of the finest medieval troubadours and poets, with his works retaining prominence among medievalists. Under Afonso IV's rule, the navy expanded its influence, by the kingdom venturing to the Canary Islands in 1336, foreshadowing its aspirations for transoceanic exploration. Subsequent expeditions, financed by the Crown and boasting multinational crews, demonstrated Portugal's commitment to building a formidable navy capable of navigating far from European shores. King Fernando I furthered this commitment by establishing the Company of the Carracks, serving as an insurance entity for boat owners and incentivizing greater participation in maritime trade. These initiatives underscored Portugal's strategic investment in maritime prowess and laid the foundation for its future as a maritime powerhouse. When it comes to periods of crisis, Portugal faced various challenges, including internal and external conflicts, as well as pandemics like the Black Death. Striking in the 1340s, the Black Death claimed a third of Portugal's population, and led to rural the population, as workers sought refuge in urban areas. This caused an economic crisis as labor became scarce and workers demanded higher wages from nobles, who then asked high prices for essential products. King Afonso IV responded effectively by regulating prices of essential goods and ensuring healthy peasants returned to work. Despite some fields remaining depopulated into the reign of King Fernando, Afonso's grandson, effective measures such as issuing land incentives called Cismarias helped to repopulate these areas. Portugal's swift response to the Black Death made it one of the first countries to efficiently tackle the devastating plague. Internal conflicts characterized the reigns of all Portuguese rulers of the 14th century each facing military opposition from their countrymen. During Dinij's rule, he waged a civil war against his brother, who contested the throne, and later clashed with his son, Afonso, who harbored similar ambitions. 
Afonso IV engaged in conflict with his half-brother over lands inherited by the latter, which Afonso denied him, and with his son Pedro, who sought vengeance for the death of his lover, holding his father responsible. Fernando, Pedro's son, confronted a nobleman who had been previously married to his wife until the moment the king married her. The most significant external conflicts during this era were the three Fernandine Wars, pitting Portugal against Castile. The First and Second Wars, waged against Henry II, ended in Portuguese defeats, with the humiliating 1373 Treaty of Santarém being a symbol of the failure. The Third Conflict, fought from 1381 to 1382 between Fernando and Henry's son Juan, also resulted in Portugal's defeat. In the aftermath, Fernando agreed to betroth his daughter Beatriz to the Castilian king's son and later to Juan himself following the death of the Castilian queen. The great problem here was that Fernando lacked sons. Beatriz, his eldest daughter, stood to inherit the Portuguese throne which would make Juan king alongside her. However, Fernando's correspondence with Juan clarified that only the offspring of Beatriz and Juan would inherit the monarchy, contingent on Beatriz's survival. If Beatriz died, Juan would ascend the throne. This crisis would lead to the end of the First Dynasty and to the period of two years, from 1383 to 1385, known as the Interregnum, where a bastard son of King Pedro, named João, would fight Juan for the kingdom and win, inaugurating a new dynasty. To clarify each king's contributions, I'll mention by which type of action each of them is remembered for. Afonso I, also known as Afonso Henriques, founded the kingdom through his prowess as a warrior king. Sancho I's legacy lies in his role as a settler, issuing numerous royal charters to populate the realm. Afonso II is celebrated as a lawmaker for overseeing the creation of Portugal's first set of laws. Sancho II's reign is associated with the conquest of much of the southern territory, though historians debate his individual contribution versus that of the military order of Santiago. His rule ended in civil war, leading to his defeat by his brother Afonso, who succeeded him. Afonso III's rule saw the end of the Portuguese Reconquista, his son, Dinish, left a multifaceted legacy as a poet, farmer, troubadour, the founder of the Order of Christ and the Portuguese Navy. Afonso IV earned renown as a warrior king, notably for his role in defending Hispania against the final Muslim invasion at the Battle of Salado in 1340. Pedro I's reign was marked by efforts to centralize royal power, often clashing with the privileges of the clergy. Fernando I is remembered for the law of Cismarias, aimed at repopulating rural areas and the establishment of the Company of the Caracs, an insurance entity for boat owners. However, his defeats against Castile led to the turbulent interregnum of 1383 to 1385. This dynasty boasted some of Portugal's greatest rulers, and even Fernando's defeats did not cast a legacy of disaster over the kingdom. His half-brother, João, first king of the subsequent dynasty, avenged Fernando's losses by ending the two-year interregnum at the 1385 Battle of Algebarrota, securing a resounding victory against Juan and consolidating Portuguese independence. <laughs> <laughs>